opening statement. We'll go to questions. Sounds good. All right, good afternoon. Uh, happy holidays. Thanks for being on. Um, at this point, I'm, I'm confused on what day it is. Uh, it's, uh, it's Tuesday in my mind, so that's why we're doing a press conference. I believe it's Sunday, actually. But uh, So I appreciate you all joining us on a, on a Sunday afternoon here. Um, our players and our staff are, are really excited about finishing 2020 in Memphis. Uh, at the Liberty Bowl, at the Liberty Bowl versus versus Army, a lot of respect for Coach Munkin and his staff, and and really all the cadets. Um, this is going to be a very tough opponent, uh, especially on a short notice. Kind of quick preview for uh, for Army here for our local people. Um, special teams wise, first very good overall. You can tell uh, Coach Munkin's hands are uh, are all are very involved. I guess the best way to say that special teams wise, their punter Harding. Uh, 43 yard average he's very good long kid uh, ball really explodes off his foot used two kickers I think both of them been effective eight of ten on field goals for the year uh, Robinson uh, their punt returner kickoff returner uh, is dangerous he's done a great job and then they blocked a bunch of kicks they blocked three punts this year and then four PAT or field goals uh, so we're gonna have to do a very good job in both the punt and field goal game uh, offensively option attack I think that's well documented uh, one of the top rushing attacks in the entire country, and they've been there for a long time. Uh, tough, to, tough to defend. A lot of motions, uh, formation varieties. Do a really good job of, of mixing up those those looks and finding plays each week that that are effective. They've used two quarterbacks, uh, Tyler and Anderson. I, we expect to see both of them in the game. Uh, multiple fullbacks. They're all big, physical guys downhill. Um, and do a great job, especially on short yardage for those guys. And they've got speed on the perimeter. Um, physical and athletic up front. I don't think that probably gets talked about enough. As people talk about Army being undersized, I don't see that at all when I turn it on film. I mean, all guys that are long uh, really come off the ball extremely physical. And I know uh, one of those guys up front has already been selected for a postseason all-star game. So um, – I don't, I don't see any, any disadvantages up front for them. Uh, defensively, there are three down front. Uh, statistically, at the top of the co- in the country in almost every de- defensive category, um, their defense coordinator there, Nate Woody, uh, we've 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 played against each other several times. He was at Georgia Tech, 2018. Before that, he was at at App State for a long time with uh, Satterfield. Um, you know, I think the nose guard is extremely extremely active. Uh, Cockrell is his name. He's disruptive. Uh, we're going to have to have a really solid plan for him. I think the two linebackers, Radigan and, and Smith, uh, really get downhill and they're physical. They do a really good job versus the run all year. And then the cornerback, Moore, um, who would know about Hoover High School kid, uh, saw him in high school a couple, uh, several times, makes a lot of plays. He seems to be all the way, always around the ball and impressed by how he's playing. So, really good outfit. They're 9 and 2. Um, and so, when you turn on their film, they're what you they're what you expect to see a disciplined group that plays extremely hard, um, and they play nasty football. And I mean that in a in a complimentary uh, way. Uh, they play whistle through the whistle. Um, they get guys on the ground. Um, they get to the football defensively with an attitude. So they play nasty. And again, I mean that in a positive manner. Uh, it's a great challenge. Uh, but also uh, for our guys and our program, I think it's a tremendous opportunity for our team. Uh, there's going to be a lot of attention on this game. You know, I, I would even uh, maybe even say that it's going to be the most watched bowl game outside the, the national semifinals. And, and I understand, and our kids understand, there probably won't be a whole lot of people outside the state of West Virginia that are pulling for us. And so it's, uh, it's going to be a fun afternoon. And, again, we're looking forward to, to finishing – finish the season down in Memphis. So with that, I'll, I'll take questions. We'll start with Mitch Davis. Go ahead. Coach, yes, talk about your uh, the bowl week prep and talk about your guys. How excited are they to be playing in the AutoZone Liberty Bowl? Uh, I knew the opponent had changed, but talk about just the excitement level around your program. Oh, yeah, our guys are just ready to play. Anytime you play as bad as we did last time out, you want to play another game. And uh, so that's where we're at. Um, you know, unfortunate for our guys won't get to go through the normal uh, bowl experience. I know the AutoZone Liberty Bowl does a uh, fantastic job really sponsoring that event. Um, and, and so, unfortunately, we won't be able to experience the city of Memphis and our players won't be able to experience or have the full experience of a bowl 
but we're looking forward just to taking the field and uh, and playing against a quality opponent to to finish the season. Greg Hunter. So, Neil, your club, uh, in terms of who can play, who can't play, obviously we know those things can change, but um, start with Tony Fields. What, what does it mean without him? And then what can Scotty Young do in a short time and trying to learn what you're doing? Well, I'll, I'll, so we lose a guy in Tony Fields who was well, a great player for us this year and, and came in here and, and really played at high level um, really up until, until the last game. I think he's a guy that – um, was bought into what we were doing, um, and I think one of the leading tacklers in the country. Um, and so you don't just replace him, um, but we do feel like we have some guys that are going to be able to play the mic position that will be extremely productive. Dylan Tonkery, who's going to fi- finish co- his career, and uh, a great career here um, as a West Virginia kid playing for the Mountaineers. And he's going to – he's really looking forward to to playing his last game, and I know we'll get to his best effort. And then Josh Chandler uh, will play some at Mike too. And uh, and he's a guy that's done that. He spelled Tony throughout the year. Uh, so we feel confident in that position. And we lose a we lose a, a really productive player in Tony Fields, but we also add a, a, a really productive player in Scotty Young and a guy that I think our fan base is going to be excited about seeing. Um, a guy that was uh, that played it at all Pac-12 level at Arizona. Uh, he's had a great year. He knows our scheme, so that's not. I and mean, he's been here since the summer, so he he's got a good feel, uh, Greg, of our of our scheme. So it's not really learning; it's just getting his assignments down for this week. No no different than any of the rest of our guys. John Antonic. Coach, I know um, issue number one is going to be stopping them. But issue one A is going to be simulating stopping them. How have you divided up your roster? I counted twenty two guys carried the ball this year for him. How do you divide that up to get the looks you need to get prepared? Yeah, I mean, I think honestly, John, I don't know if we'll get a the the actual look that we're going to get in the game. You know, I mean, I, I just I don't know. It's probably the same for them. Honestly, you'd have to ask ask their staff, but we're not going to be able to simulate at full speed the option attack. Um, what we're trying to do is uh, is do the best we can. Uh, Grayson Malashevitz is playing quarterback for us this week. He's got some experience. He did that a little bit at Spring Valley uh, in, a, in a couple of packages they had. So he's having a good time with that. Um, he's similar to size to the Tyler kid, uh, probably not as, 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 as quick um, as he. But our scout team guys have embraced it. And that's the thing. Anytime you do something a little bit different, you know, our guys, uh, our defensive players are exci- excited about the challenge just because it's different. And when you get to this point of the year, as long of a season as we've had, when you get the opportunity to do something a little bit different, you know, uh, it makes you pay attention. It makes you uh, – your practice is a little bit more spirited. Uh, same with our scout team. Those guys have been over there. They've given the look for the opposing team all year. And um, and for to finish this here for the last week and a half, doing something that's different, uh, those guys have enjoyed it. They really have. and and But I don't think we'll be able to give – you know, the first couple drives of the game are going to be completely different um, than when we play Army um, on the 31st there compared to what we can do in practice. Kevin Kinder, go ahead. It's with their ability to control the ball. Does that influence you in your offensive game plan any, knowing that you might have – you know, fewer possessions than a normal game? I think it ha- you have to take that into account. Um, they, they're they really aggressive on fourth down. Uh, we've, we've always been really aggressive on fourth down, too. So, um, both of us, you know, probably subscribe to the same kind of theory. Um, I think we've got to, you know, getting off the field is going to be an issue. I think they're right in the top three or four in the country in time of possession. Um, so, it works both ways is – Defensively, we've got to be able to get off the field. Offensively, we've got to be able to stay on the field. Um, you know, I think that four down territory maybe stretches a little bit more against them. Um, you know, but you got to make those decisions within the game also. Keenan Cummings, go ahead. Hey, Neil. Uh, happy holidays, man. Um, curious about uh, after this game, just looking ahead a little bit. How do you guys handle winter workouts this year? I mean, is it different? I mean, obviously in the summer you guys took stuff outside. How does that change now? Uh, you know, heading into the winter. Yeah, happy holidays. Thanks, 
Thanks for that, Keenan. Um, first thing we're going to do is get away from each other. That's the first thing we're going to do. We're going to take a break, extended break, staff and players, and um, we'll come back. I don't have it right in front of me. I think the, the winter semester starts January 17th, and we'll come back and go through quarantine and the testing process kind of, and, and I think that will be a five-day period to get everybody back and do that. Um, and then, you know, as far as the winter workouts are going to go, is we'll still have that same kind of – I can't remember without looking at it. It's a six- or seven-week block there. Um, you know, we'll just have to do some of the same COVID uh, procedures and protocols that we've had in place from a testing standpoint, and then we'll have smaller groups. Um, and then if we do anything um, with very many guys, we'll have to go in the indoor for it. Um, but that's that's kind of how we'll go. I mean, other than having smaller groups, wearing masks, those type of things, I don't I don't anticipate it – being a whole lot different, um, Keenan. Back to Mitch. Coach, uh, I talked to the Liberty Bowl last week, uh, executive director there. Talk about some of the virtual stuff you guys may or may not do, maybe with St. Jude or some of the other local things around Memphis. Are you guys planning on doing anything with uh, St. Jude virtually? And when are you guys coming into Memphis? The day before or two days before? So we're coming in the day before. <laughs> Yeah, we'll come in the day before, um, and then we'll be um, – I'm probably not as in tune uh, to the to some of the bowl functions as, as our administrative people are, um, but we'll do from a virtual standpoint as far as with the St. Jude's kids, we'll do whatever we're asked to do and, and be willing to do it, and our guys will be excited to do it. We've done that with our children's hospital here. Um, who who usually we are very involved with because we share a parking lot with. Um, but during during these times uh, with COVID, we've not been able to do that. But we'll do what we are, whatever the the bowl will allow us to do, or St. Jude will allow us to do. Be when and and be extremely happy about doing it. Greg Hunter, go ahead. So Neil, during your Troy days, you would have faced Georgia Southern regularly. And I don't know, if, you know, is that option similar to what you face, and does that prep help you any with this one? So. George Southern's all is is gone to mostly gun. When we were, when we were playing them, they were mostly gun option. Um, now Army has has done a good good bit, and they do it every game of getting into the gun. So maybe there's some crossover there. Um, this will be the first time playing a true option attack uh, under center, Greg. Uh, since since I've been a head coach, really, uh, probably going back to when I was a player when uh, Coach Stowers was at Rhode Island. It's probably the last time that faced a under center option attack. But there are some similarities, I mean, um, in how, how you defend it for sure. Um, but like I said, we don't have anybody that was on our staff that, that called the defense when we were, uh, we were playing those guys either. Mike Casaza, go ahead. Hey, Neil, how's it going? Good, Mike. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Two things for you. Um, as a coach, when you see that assignment for you, where do you start as far as – I mean, you went back to Rhode Island and Stowers. He knows a lot about it. But call friends. Do you figure out who your friends are that have played it? And then when you're teaching your guys, it's so different. Where do you begin? Is it the fullback and build off of that? Like what's the first day, first lesson there? Yeah, so I think the, the mistake people make sometimes is you go away from what your base defensive philosophies are. Um, and we, we won't make that mistake um we're gonna we're gonna run the 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 base schemes that that we've ran all year um now we have to do it in a way where we play extremely sound assignment football and we have to have edges um the big point of emphasis is pursuit angles and leveraging the ball um that's that's the thing that probably concerns me more than anything not necessarily assignment errors but just poor pursuit angles our poor leverage on the football. And so – and then, you know, our eyes. You know, they don't throw it a whole lot, but when they do, they're big plays. And so, to limit those, we've got to we've got to do a really good job in the back end with our eyes. And so, as far as getting started on it, um, you know, we've embraced this opportunity. And, and I'll say this – I've said this privately to our team, and I'll say this here too, is we, we've embraced this game. You know, um, I felt for those – uh, those coaches and players at Army, when they didn't initially make a bowl game, 
I don't understand what went into that. That 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 should have never been the case. Um, but when Tennessee had their COVID issues, um, we were asked and we didn't blink an eye. And you know, we welcome we welcome the opportunity to play them. I think it brings extra exposure to this game. Um, you know, I think it's a great fit. You know, Army playing in the Liberty Bowl makes sense to me. You know. Um, and so we've embraced that. As far as approaching the, the option, we want to stay within our base. And then and then we've talked to people that have, have played them or traditionally played them um, and tried to match that up with what our base uh, kind of scheme is. Cody Nesper. Hey, Neil. Just um, since you didn't get a senior day this year, I was just wondering what your plans were for honoring the seniors. So we've been doing uh, – done a couple things. We've got a couple things gift wise that we're doing. And then we've turned this bowl. One of the, one of the goals of our, you know, anytime we go to a bowl is to, is to honor the outgoing senior class. We've kind of upped that up a little bit more. We do a, what we call a senior salute where somebody in their position meeting stands up and talks about what that senior has meant to them individually and them, uh, what they've meant to the program from their perspective. Uh, and we're going to do a couple things, um, the night before the game and, and on game day to, to honor those guys. Um, uh, and then we're going to do something probably in the following year where those those guys and, and their parents have an opportunity to come back. Back to Greg. Okay, the fun stuff. You guys have had a couple of fun activities over the last week. Uh, who could sled ride at the Wisp? Who won? <laughs> and, I mean, again, in a serious note, what, why do you think that's important, just sort of a team-building activity? Well, I think that – when you talk about a bowl for me, you, the goal number one is to win the game. The second thing is is you want to create a rewarding, mem- memorable experience. Uh, bowl games are different than regular football games to me. Okay, I think you have to treat them as a reward, um, whether that's gifts or whether it's, it's experiences, whatever. Um, but you want them, you want them to be memorable. Now, most of the time, it involves a I extended stay at a, at a, at a destination that that's not the case this time. So, um, we wanted to create our own, all right, our own kind of experiences. We went to wisp and it was fun. I'd never done that. I can tell you who, who went, who did not go the fastest. Y'all seen the video. That was me. Um, I, I went about as slow as you can go and that's about my speed on that kind of stuff. Um, but our guys, our guys had a blast. Uh, they had, they had a blast and, and y'all, I'm sure y'all seen a bunch of the videos with them, uh, going down and, um, and we're going to, we're going to do something else this week, but I think it's just, you want to create memories, you know what I mean? And this is the last game, uh, of the 2020 season, last game that this group of, of, of staff and players are going to be together. And I think you need to create some, create some memories outside the game as part of this experience. Carly Nevis, go ahead. Coach, you've asked a lot throughout the year about Darius Stills, but the question about the seniors just reminded me, just what has a player like Darius meant to this program, especially helping you transition in um, when you first got here? Well, so for me, I think it's it's a couple of different things. You know, Darius is, is a great proof um, that, that this state produces high-level players. Okay, and now our population's not as large as, as a lot of states, um, but the guys that we do have that are are capable of playing at the Power Five level can do so at an extremely high level. And if you look at him, he's been on, you know, whether it was a defensive um, lineman of the year in the Big 12 or he's on All-American teams, he's got a, a tremendous amount of recognition and deservingly so for the – for how he's played the last two years. So that to me, I think it's a, it's a great point for all these guys, young men, boys, however you want to say it, that are playing football, whether they're from my son's age at five, you know, playing flag football all the way up to the guys playing high school football in this state. You know, you always want somebody that, that proves before you that's done it, you know, and, and there you are, Darius Stills, you know, is from Fairmont. And he's and he's playing extremely high level, you know, and and you see him on TV. So I think that's um, individually from Darius. Um, what what has been really rewarding uh, for me as a coach is Darius. If you look at his stats, all right, his stats really aren't as good as they were a year ago, but he's played within the scheme of the defense, and as an overall football player, he's played much better. And so, 
he's bought in to what we're doing from a schematic standpoint. Um, he's been unselfish in that standpoint. But even though his stats are his stats are down, he's still getting rewarded because whether it's coaches, media members, NFL personnel, whoever's voting on these awards understand at the level of football he's playing and how he's affecting the game or how he's affecting opposing offense, even though his stats maybe are a little bit down, okay? And I just don't think that, that, that his statistics tell a story, and it's, it's been – and I'm glad he's getting rewarded uh, for, his, for his level of play, not necessarily his numbers. We'll take this last question from Mike Casaza. Go ahead. Yeah, you got um, good news, it sounds like, with Evan and Alonzo coming back. Just curious how these conversations are going um, for guys who choose to stay, choose to go, and and how much this changes things. I mean, almost as soon as the game is over on Friday. Yeah, you know, um, so what I'm, I'm kind of leaving those up to let those guys announce it on their own. We're going to have, um, I think, four more right off the top of my head. Um, could be three. I don't have it right in front of me, but it's either going to be three or four more that are that are coming back. And so, really going to let them. We're not going to have an official release or anything from. Uh, from our program, I'm going to let them announce it um, uh, on their social media channels or however they want to do that. Um, it, it's not going to have as huge an impact on us as it does maybe some other programs for a couple of reasons. Number one is we didn't play the whole year with the – you know, we were in the low 70s scholarship-wise. Uh, we've got a relatively small senior class. And so – from a recruiting perspective, it's really not going to affect us. Maybe like it's going to some other programs. We're, we're, we plan to use all 25 in the 21 class. We plan to use all 25 in the 22 class. And we feel good about fitting under the 85 number.